So now we've been talking about limits. So we've talked about how can I find a limit when I can use direct substitution? How can I use a graph or a table to help me find a limit? Um, we've also talked about how can I manipulate a function so that function is continuous, um, or how can I manipulate a function so that function is equivalent to uh, some other continuous function at all but one point. So in other words, there's a hole, right? So but that function is continuous at, um, or excuse me, equivalent to that other function at all but one point, so I can now use direct substitution. We've talked about the different types of discontinuities, how we have a hole if we can do some canceling and we can remove a point of discontinuity, or how we have an asymptote if we cannot remove it. Well, so now we want to talk about the actual definition of continuous. Um, up until now, I've said, oh, I know this is a linear function, therefore I know it's continuous, or oh, I know a little bit about this function, now I know, so I know it's continuous. Um, but really, in calculus, we want to use what we've now talked about in terms of limits to be able to actually prove something is continuous with three different conditions. So we can say a function is continuous as long as that function is defined for whatever c value we're looking at, we can um, prove it's continuous if um, the limit at that c value exists. And then also that the limit is equal to the function at that point. Because notice if this third condition was not met, I could have a situation where I had a hole that was filled in at a higher point. So I could have something kind of similar. Um, hang on, let me do a better job of that. I could have something something like this because that would def um, that would work for condition one, condition two, uh, but it does not work for condition three. Um, so all three conditions need to be met or proven. So um, if I look at these next couple examples, I don't remember how many I have here. I don't know if I have two or three. Um, but if I'm looking at this first one, if I'm determining whether or not this is continuous by the definition of con continuity, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, let's look at the first condition. <clears throat> condition one says that f of c is defined. Um, and I don't think I put, um, oh, and so um, and notice that I know that um, for all x values less than or equal to zero, I know that this linear function is continuous. For all x values greater than zero, I know that this quadratic equation is continuous. My concern is what's gonna be happening at zero because I have the potential to be having x plus one and then at x equals zero switch to a quadratic equation in one fluid movement where there is no jump or no gap. But I also have the um, a possibility that I have x equal to plus x plus 1 being this linear function that's continuous, and then at x equals 0 doing some kind of jump up to x squared plus 1. So um, going through these conditions here, condition 1, so f of c is defined, so let's see what's happening at 0. When x is, great, uh, is equal to 0, notice I'm going to use the top function, so I'll have 0 plus 1 equals 0, so condition 1 is met. When x is 0, if I look at the limit as x approaches 0, because I have two separate functions, one function on the left side of 0, one function on the right side of 0, I'm going to have to, in order to answer this question, I'm going to have to look at the limit as x approaches 0 from the left and the limit as x approaches 0 from the right each individually. So as I approach from the left, from the left being values that are smaller than 0, I'm going to take my top function. So I can use direct substitution. I get 0 plus 1 is 0. If I look at as x approaches 0 from the right, I'm approaching from values that are bigger than 0. So I can look at my bottom function. Again, using direct substitution, I get 0 squared plus 1 is 1. Therefore, I can say that the limit does exist, and it is 1. And I just realized that I said 0 plus 1 is 0 up on condition 1. I meant to say it's 1. Um, the nice thing about condition 3 is condition 3, I, sh I don't have to do any work for it. I just have to show that condition 1 and condition 2 are equal. Since f of 1 equals 1 and the limit as x approaches 0 equals 1, I can go ahead and also say that condition 3 is met. So I can say that this is continuous. Um, doing the same thing with example two, and there are three examples. So doing the same thing with example two, I have still a piecewise function. There's three pieces to it, but that's okay. Um, so if I'm going to determine if this is continuous or not, I see that my x squared minus two is continuous, it's quadratic. Two is a constant function, it's continuous. Two x plus one is a continuous linear function. So my concern will be at x equals three. So notice that for this function, I'm looking at values that are between zero and three. 
I'm looking at when x is equal to 3, and because I always read the variable first, I'm looking at when x is greater than 3. So notice on this one, my domain, it looks like is only values that are greater than 0. So on that domain, my area of concern is what is happening when x equals 3. Again, am I making a smooth transition from some quadratic function to a linear function, or am I doing a quadratic function, making a jump, and then starting into some linear function. So let's talk about that. So let's go for part one. Let's go ahead and say what is f of three? Well, f of three would be two because when x is equal to two, I choose my middle function. For condition two, what is the limit as x approaches three? Well, in order to determine the overall limit, I need to look at both the limit as x approaches three from the left and the limit as x approaches 3 from the right. Well, I approach 3 from the left by approaching values from values that are smaller than 3. So, in other words, x is between 0 and 3 would be values smaller than 3 using direct substitution there. I get 3 squared, which is 9, minus 2 is 7. As I approach values from the right, from the right are x values greater than 3, so it's going to be this one here. And I get 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So my overall limit does exist at 7. But unfortunately, condition 3, so even though 2 and 1 work, condition 3, notice that f of 3 does not equal the limit as x approaches 3. Therefore, I can say that f of x is not continuous. at x equals 3 since condition 3 is not met. And really, I shouldn't say condition 3. I should say since f of 3 does not equal the limit as x approaches 3. I'm um, finally looking at example three, doing the same thing. So this would be a good one if you wanted to pause the video and try one on your own just to see if you are um, understanding this concept and then go ahead and hit play again and make sure your answer does match up with mine. All right, now that you've had a chance to try this problem, um, first thing I'm going to do is look at my first condition, which says um, is, well, first of all, I should talk about continuous quadratic, continuous linear, what's happening at one. Am I congrat quadratic and then switch immediately to linear, or am I quadratic and then jump to switch to linear? So f of 1, um, so x is greater than or equal to 1. I'm going to go ahead and use direct substitution on my bottom function. I get 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And then um, next condition, I have to determine does the limit as x approaches 1 exist? Well, let's check the limit. A little scratch work over here as x approaches 1 from the left, and the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. As it approaches 1 from the left, I'm going to choose my top function. Using direct substitution, I get 1 plus 2 is 3. Um, as x approaches 1 from the right, I choose my bottom function, x value is bigger than 1, and I get 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Therefore, the limit as x approaches 1 does not exist, and f of x is not continuous at x equals 1 since the limit as x approaches 1 does not exist. Um, so again, we can use some intuition when we're trying to determine if something's continuous based on our knowledge of the functions. Um, but the problem is, is that when we deal with functions that we we don't know a lot about, especially um, functions like piecewise functions where we're not sure if it is a continuous piecewise function or if there is some kind of jump going on in our piecewise function, it is necessary that we are able to understand the definition of a continuous function in those three conditions that must be met and be able to show that they either are or are not being met. And if they are not being met, be able to verbalize what part it is that's falling apart or what part it is that's causing it to not be continuous.